Hello and welcome back to Gippy's Garden. It is finally fig season. September's the month when most of the figs around here start ripening up and we'll start seeing some in October as well. But a lot of the earlier varieties are ripe and ready to eat. Be sure to stick around till the end of the video because we've got some figs that we've gotten to harvest and try already this month. Let's start with our three in-ground figs. This one here is the Desert King. I have pruned back quite a few of the sprouts that came out from the base of this one because there were just too many branches. This is the one that died back uh, during the winter and it had really a big growth spurt as you can see. So I decided to leave three branches and they're all very tall, well over probably six to seven feet tall and they are all still very very green so they have not started to lignify yet so i may need to protect this over the winter so it doesn't die back again we do have a few main crop figs forming on on this one however they're never going to ripen because the main crop on the desert king requires the fig wasp which we do not have so only the braba crop which is comes in the the early summer is what ripens here and we'll have to wait till next year to get that. The next one we have that I planted this spring and I've got a few peppers and leeks around it as well, has finally had some figs form on it. However, they're still fairly small. They haven't started swelling yet, so I'm not sure if we're gonna have enough season uh, for that to mature, but we've got about six, I believe, figs on this one and I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see if they'll ripen up next month, but if they don't ripen next month, they probably won't. And this is the last of the in-ground figs. This one is the Laterula. This is one I planted, I believe, two years ago. It died to the ground the first year. I protected it last winter and got it to survive. And I might protect it again this winter. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but it did get some Braba, but they dropped, so I didn't get any Braba off this one. And then I have not seen a single, well actually it does look like it might be just starting to try to form some main crop figs, but those definitely will not ripen this year for sure. I'm not sure why it took so long for this one to start forming main crop figs but we'll have to wait and see how it does next year. But if it does the same thing next year, I'm going to take this out and plant something else in its place. Now my Robert's Golden Rainbow, I have under cover of the blueberry netting here. It was my first fig to start swelling and I didn't want the birds to get to it because the birds got my first uh, BSU, Brandon Street Unknown fig. So I put it in here for protection and so far nothing has gotten to it. And I've already harvested a few of these figs, and we still have quite a few more. I think it had around 12 or so figs on it. And I've been pretty much waiting till the figs drop before I eat them. So I've been checking on it every day because we have a few of them in here that were pretty close to being ready. And I just found this. So we've got one here that just dropped today. So this one is going to be a really good one. This is by far my favorite fig. Um, that I've harvested so far this year. And we've got this one here that looks like it's gonna be dropping here any day now. And then we've still got quite a few green ones on there that are swelling and will ripen over the next week or two. I do have one fig that I moved into the greenhouse to protect it from the birds. And so far the birds have not gotten to it or really any of the figs yet, aside from that very first Brandon Street Unknown. But this one here is the Marseille Black VS and I've already harvested a few of those. And this one looks like it is about ready to drop. And this is another one I'm just kind of waiting for figs to drop before I harvest them. And I'm not seeing any right now, but I did pick one up off the ground yesterday. Now here's the Brandon Street Unknown. I've already harvested quite a few off of this one. This one here looks like it is pretty much ready to pick and we've got quite a few more that are really pretty close. This is a really small 
fig compared to a lot of the others. I have two Ronde Bordeaux that I've been picking actually quite a few figs off of. This one small one back here is a child of my other larger one and I've harvested probably four figs off of that one and I did protect that one with some mesh bags and they all dropped when they were ready so no birds got to any of these or any figs surprisingly except for that first one um, but this is my larger Ronde Bordeaux tree and it has quite a few that are looks like they're about ready to drop and should be harvesting some of those soon so this is one tree that I plan to prune back a little more heavily this winter because there are far too many branches and limbs for this small container. Now the fig with the most figs on it in my collection is this Nero 600M. So I just counted the figs on this today and there are 27 figs on this one little tree. So there's one, two, three, four branches and they're just loaded with figs. I haven't harvested any yet but this is the first one that has started to swell and it's a pretty good sized fig. So I'm looking forward to hopefully harvesting a few of those over the next month or so. Now the LSU tiger here had two figs on it, but one of them ended up dropping before it matured and it still has one fig left that's still pretty firm. So it looks like it might be starting to swell a little bit. So hopefully it has time to ripen. This is a little JFE Madeira that I have it's got five, I think, figs on it. They are still pretty small. They do have some pink, um, a little bit of pink showing in the eye. So maybe, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see, but this is a, a later ripening variety and I'm not sure it's gonna have time or not, but I'm crossing my fingers. Now, one of my absolute favorites is white Madeira number one. And I've got two plants of those. This one on the right here is actually the parent of this bigger one on the left. So I have this one on the right here. The branches, as you can see, are just kind of going completely horizontal, which is not ideal. So that's why I took a cutting off of this one and decided to start a new plant and hopefully try to train it to grow a little bit more straight. I've got some stakes here trying to support it um, so it doesn't go off to the side like the other one. And so far it seems to be working pretty well. Um, this one actually has about the same number of figs on it as the other one. Um, this one is probably the biggest one here. It's still very firm, so I don't think it's gonna ripen um, for another several weeks yet. Um, but hopefully we'll get some before the end of the season. But this is another kind of late ripening variety. Here's my mystery white fig. I have harvested a few figs off of this one. This one seems to be a favorite of the wasps. So I'm always seeing wasps trying to eat the, the figs on the ends there. Even though I haven't noticed much dripping from the eye, but they seem to be getting a lot of sweetness from just the skin, I guess. Um, but I don't think any of these are, are quite ripe yet, but we do have quite a few figs on it. Um, it didn't get any Braba this year, but it, I think it did get some the year before. This here is Tacoma Violet and this year it's ripening much later than it did last year. Last year it was my, I believe it was my first main crop fig to ripen, but this one is just taking its time and the figs are not getting very big. So we've got, oh, it looks like something got a hold of this one. That's not going to be edible. I'm not sure if it was a bird? I hope not. I don't know if you could see that, but there's definitely some chewing going on on this fig. I'm not seeing any bugs on it, and if it was a bird, it seems like it would have eaten a lot more than just that little bit. So I'm going to have to keep my eye out and make sure the birds don't get to any of the figs. Well, I found the culprit. It's definitely the wasps that are eating the Tacoma Violet. I'm going to have to do something about that. So I just gave that fig to the one of the chickens and she just took off with it. <laughs> That's Nina. 
Now these last two are in seven gallon containers, so they're in a little bigger container than all the rest of the figs. We've got Burgessot Grease over here. Now it dropped quite a few early main crop figs. They just kind of turned soft and dropped off. But we've got a few that, that stuck on, and these ones that are left are still pretty hard. They do look like some of them are starting to swell a little bit, so we'll have to wait and see if they'll mature or not. But they look like they might, might make it. We'll see. And then this one here is the Figo Preto. This is another one that takes a little bit longer growing season. I'm considering taking some of these figs off to help the other ones grow a little bit more quickly, but they're all pretty hard. But the, the eye you can see is starting to turn pink, which is, I think, a pretty good sign that it is getting somewhere. But we'll have to wait and see. I'm not sure if there's going to be enough season left to harvest these. But we've had some pretty cold temperatures already down in the mid-30s, which is really not great for figs. But we're, our daytime temperatures are still fairly decent, so um, we may have another month or so of some good weather left. We'll have to wait and see, but if it starts getting too cold, I'm going to start moving the figs into the greenhouse at night. Now here we have all of our fig cuttings that I started in around February time frame. I'm not going to go over every single one, but I just want to show you a few that are doing exceptionally well. So this one here is the Rosalino. This is one of the few that has um, a fig that has formed on it. So I, I decided not to take all the figs off. Actually, it's got two figs. There's another one right there. There's probably no chance that these are going to mature, but I decided to uh, just leave them on. And then another one that we have some figs on yeah, actually pretty decent size. So this is the Marius Black Greek, and it's got four figs right there, and another two here, and one here. So this looks like it's going to be a really promising high producer, so I can't wait till next year to see what this does. But I don't think these are going to have time to reach maturity this year. Now, I do still have four of these old yeller figs because it was such an easy rooter. Every single one that I rooted that I got from Ivy Organics was successful. So I think I'm gonna take these two smaller ones to a fig tasting this weekend and see if I can get rid of some of my extras. I'm sure it won't be too hard to find somebody to take these off my hands. Now this one here is the Long Day Out and I just wanted to show this one because it has such a neat growing habit. It's kind of more like a little bush but we've got a lot of this these the leaf pattern is actually really neat it's got the really long fingers there um, but i don't see any i don't think there's any figs forming on it but i just think this is a kind of a neat variety that just kind of grows kind of funny well actually we do have a tiny little fig right there that one definitely is not going to mature this year but maybe we'll get a fig next year I have heard that these could take a few years to be productive, so I might need to have a little patience with, with this one. Now we also have some small figs forming on our Vern's Brown Turkey, and I still have two of these. I did get rid of one of them at our last fig tasting, so I still have two left, and I may just keep these two for now and maybe get rid of one next year. But we do have, that's our largest fig on, on this one. And I think we have a couple more little tiny ones. Now the only other of these young ones that has some figs forming on it is called the one. And we've got two here and one here and another couple up there. All right, so that is it for the, the fig show and tell. Now let's go do some tastings. All right, this is the Brandon Street Unknown harvested September 14th. Let's weigh it first. It's a relatively small fig. 21.5 grams. Looks pretty juicy inside. Here's a close-up of the inside. Nice and juicy. I get a lot of strawberry. The seeds are a little bit crunchy. It's 
try the other half. Getting a little raspberry in that one. Definite berry flavor. Tasty fig. We've still got a few more on there, so hopefully those will ripen up soon. The Robert's Golden Rainbow is a fairly large fig, so let's see how much it weighs. 73.7 grams. All right, let's take a look inside. So a nice light green color, probably not quite as ripe as I would like. Here's a close-up look at the inside. We're definitely gonna hold off on harvesting the others until they're a little more soft. All right, time to taste. Mm. It's actually a lot juicier than I thought it would be. A very strong honey flavor. And some melon. I think the skin has a, a melony flavor. Mm. Very, very sweet. Really good fig. I normally don't like melon figs, but this one is really good. Mm. So this one is actually known by a few different names. I think right now Robert's Golden Rainbow is what people are calling it, but it also used to be known as Ben's Golden Riverside. But highly recommend it if you can get your hands on it. Mm. Can't wait for more to ripen. Serrande Bordeaux is a fairly small fig variety. Let's see how much it weighs. That one is 20.3 grams, and the second one is 20 grams. Let's take a look and see what the inside looks like. Molly. Molly wants a bite of figs, but I don't... Oh, she took one. Darn you. I hope you're enjoying that fig. Here's a closer look at what the inside looks like. Fairly juicy. All right, let's see if we can take a taste before Molly grabs another one of these. You can't see her, but she's right below me, eyeing the figs. You seem a little tastier than I remember last year. The seeds are a little crunchy, which I'm not a huge fan of the crunchy seeds, but flavor is really good. It's kind of similar to the Brandon Street Unknown. I get a strawberry raspberry kind of flavor. I think it is sweeter than that one, but really good fig. I will give Molly my, my stem. Here you go, Molly. <laughs> you didn't even chew it. First one weighs 25.4 grams. Second one, 26.2 grams. All right, let's see how the inside looks. The skin looks fairly thick. The inside middle is slightly dry on these two. Here's a close up of the inside. Definitely get strawberry on this one. It's still pretty juicy, it doesn't taste dry at all. Um, let's try the other one. Tastes pretty much the same. Now the seeds aren't quite as crunchy as the last few figs we've tried, which is really good. I prefer the non-crunchy texture. So let's try one more. 
still is a little bit of crunch, just not as much as the previous ones. I think I really like the flavor of this one. It seems a little bit more sweet also than the last few. A really good fig. I hope you enjoyed this month's fig update. If you're in the Pacific Northwest and have a fig that I've just got to try, let me know what it is and I'll see if I can get my hands on it and give it a try myself. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.